Hey, what's up, good people? Time for another fun, exciting episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're going to talk about Clubhouse. I got to be honest, I have a little bit of FOMO. We're going to talk all about that in a minute. We are joined by the first ever three-time, count them, one, two, three, guest <laughs> on our show, Bonnie Frank of Bonnie L. Frank Consulting. Before we introduce her and all the cool stuff she does, I have to say hello to my good friend, longtime pal, non-high school sweetheart, even though we were in the same high school together at the same time, Janet E. Johnson, where today the E stands for El Paso. Why El Paso? Because Janet said, maybe you're going to have to come up with an L for Bonnie L. Franklin, and I'm going to El Paso on that idea, Janet E. Johnson. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. I don't even know what to They're say. Coming. To How you doing? It's 2021. Holy cow, we made it. Thank God. We have not, I know we haven't recorded a podcast in a little bit. We've just kind of, you know, Terry and I kind of just swing with things. I go, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do it, you know? So now really? we have Bonnie on talking about Clubhouse. I'm excited to do this because I know Terry's messaged me. I actually sent him an invite. He was my first, just so you know, Terry, you were my first invite because I'm like, Terry needs to see this because it reminds me of Blab. But I completely forgot he's not an I, Apple user, so he could not get on it. But he was my first invite. So, yeah. I have, I have several invites to Clubhouse, as you can uh, guess, because lots of people have said, oh, my God, you need to be on this. And um, I actually was looking at an iPhone the other day, like legitimately considering buying an iPhone. That's how much FOMO I actually have on this thing. <laughs> Okay, now so, for less money, you could buy, I think you could buy an iPad and, and get the job done too. It just needs to be 13.0 or less. But right when you, when Terry said that you need to pipe in some da -na 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 music, <laughs> that's where you need to have that. <laughs> that's true. Janet, can you properly introduce our friend, Bonnie? Yeah, yeah. Well, Bonnie, we, I, I actually, I think we told this story before, but people, you know, this was a long time ago. We met and I met her founder. I actually followed her um, through Periscope back many oh. years ago. And then somehow we, we met up, we talked, we got her on a podcast and we became friends. And she's been rocking it at helping female entrepreneurs build their business. So I'll let her properly introduce herself. But the one thing I will say is I've been, um, you know, we belong in groups together and I belong to her. She has, runs a Facebook group and I've seen her talk a lot about Clubhouse before I even jumped in. I think I did it and then um, had to wait for somebody to send, you know, let me in basically. And so I've just seen her talking way more about it than I'm even integrating it. And I thought she would be a great person to bring on to talk about and I, I have some hard questions for you too about it. So yeah, so you properly introduce yourself and then let's get into the talk of Clubhouse. All right, so I'm happy to be here. And uh, so I'm Bonnie L. Frank. I'm a business coach and consultant. I'm a former teacher and college professor. And uh, I turned entrepreneur overnight about six years ago. And um, I've never had a business class and I'm not a certified coach and I'm a business coach by trade. So, um, yeah, and I, I help primarily women, about five very brave percent of my clients are men, but about 95% are women, and I take them from where they are to consistently selling out their products, programs, and services, and I do it because I started from scratch, which is not the best way to start, and it was really, really hard, and I had no training, and but here we are. So it's totally doable. And Clubhouse is, is one of the ways that I grow my business. Yeah. And it's a newer way, obviously. When Super did Clubhouse fresh. launch? Like how long has it been around out of curiosity? Yeah. So Clubhouse launched in March and um, the mission of Clubhouse is what makes Clubhouse different. It's because, uh, you know, I've, I've seen people come and go and they say, oh, it's just like every other social media app. No, actually it's the antithesis of every other social media app. It is a social media platform. There is an algorithm in play. There is artificial intelligence, AI in play. Um, and it is audio only and it is iOS only. And right now, because it's in beta, it is invite only, but that's not what makes it different. 
What makes Clubhouse different is the mission of Clubhouse. And the mission, the two guys who created it, the mission of Clubhouse is to get people together from diverse backgrounds and diverse perspectives to have meaningful, deep conversations. That is why Clubhouse. It's not, I'm not on Clubhouse because it's the new shiny thing. I'm not on TikTok. I've never done an Instagram reel. I, the, I don't do the next shiny thing because it's the next shiny thing. I, I'm on Clubhouse because I wanted to meet people from all over the world. I wanted to have deep and meaningful conversations with people from diverse backgrounds, from different perspectives, from me. That's the type of person I am. So it was not hard for me to adopt that, you know, that mission. But I, I'm also on Clubhouse because I knew that I could monetize the app quickly, which I did in five days. You're monetizing the app in five days? Yes, yes. So I've, I've been on maybe 34 days. I can't remember. Um, but yes, on day five, uh, people started hiring me. And it was, it really, Terry, it's the same thing like Janet and I met on Periscope and I monetized that in six days. So it's very much the same, um, but I'm doing it by doing exactly what I'm doing here. Just talking, just being myself and, um, and, and with Clubhouse being audio only, you don't even have, like we're doing this, this interview on video right now on Zoom, but you don't even have that to go by. You just have the person's voice. And when you only have voice to count on, right? So here we're doing an interview for a podcast. Their little face, their little face in the circle. Well, their little <laughs> avatar face in the circle. Yes, that's true. But when you only can, can really hone in on the voice, the voice is very powerful. And there's nothing more intimate than a podcaster talking in your head, right? Literally, you're walking around with that podcaster's voice in your head. And podcasting is a really, really intimate experience. And Clubhouse is very much the same. Voice is powerful. And you can either vibe with somebody or not. You can either resonate with their message or not. But it sure is obvious if they are the real deal with just their voice. Now I see why so many people are inviting me. I have the perfect face for Clubhouse. <laughs> I get it. I get it. That makes total sense. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I really do. I'm excited about what they're doing. I love how you describe their mission that has, that has so much meaning to me. And it harkens back to 2004 and 2005 and how I spent time on LinkedIn, connecting with people all over the globe learning, trying to understand, get a feel for who they were, what they were about, what they were going through. Um, so I like that they're trying to facilitate that discussion. And I like the idea that it's voice only and not video because uh, it becomes a little bit less of a popularity contest at that point. And it's really more on the message as opposed to the deliverer. And, you know, I've said for years, if I was a good looking female, I would crush social media, right? But I, <laughs> I came to this life looking like this. So I, you know, I work what I got. Come on, we got to do that. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, how, it's how it goes. So I love, I love that. So Robert Courtney, um, a past guest of our show is, is definitely talking about Clubhouse all this thinking time, showing screenshots. He actually got to pitch um grant cardone and i forget who else was on that particular screen but he's been jumping into some interesting conversations so it seems like a lot of the big names are already there and and doing big things what uh talk to us about some of the more interesting conversations that that you've joined and then some of the ones i assume that you've led as well yeah, so, um, and there are some huge names. And I mean, Oprah was on, she has deleted her account, so don't look for her, but, but, uh, but her friend is still on there. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so there are some huge names that you've heard of that everybody knows, um, you know, like Kevin Hart's on there and Tiffany Haddish is on there. Um, and, uh, you know, this, one of the Shark Tank guys is on there, you know, um, and so, there's a lot of big names that you've heard of that are stars. And then there are 
huge, huge people, CEOs of Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies, tremendously huge angel investors and venture capitalists and people in the startup space and recording artists and like major, major players who are DJs and so many people in so many different walks of life. People, Mufasa from Broadway, Mufasa, he's on there. <laughs> I don't know his name, but who cares? He's Mufasa on Broadway. I was in a room with him one night and what was he doing? This is hilarious. So, so I have just told you a lot of different things that make it compelling. This should compel you to want to get on Clubhouse more than anything. Mufasa, we'll just call him Mufasa. He was on with um, the guy who uh, got his tongue stuck on the frozen pipe in a Christmas story. He was a kid then. He's now in his 60s. We so all know that on, guy, yep. <laughs> he was, right. He was on with that guy and one of the housewives from Atlanta and a few other people, not particularly famous people, and they were reading lines from the real screenplay of Mean Girls. Huh. It was unbelievable. It was fascinating to me because the juxtaposition of all of that was fascinating. And then they had people who were just like people like me. I didn't do it, but anybody could, if they wanted to also get a part and read lines. And then they would switch parts. And so here was a movie that's been around for a long time that a lot of people know, that a lot of people have seen, and yet the same lines are being read with different voices. And they're being read with different inflections and with different meaning. And it was really, really fascinating to me to hear that. So, I mean, that is, that is just something I would have never experienced. And, you know, yeah, I go in rooms with a lot of people who talk about business and social media and marketing and, you know, whatever advertising, because that's my space. But I also go into rooms of, of people who are talking about things that I don't know anything about just to learn people who are venture capitalists, people who are pitching, like recording artists who are literally playing an instrument or singing and pitching to somebody in an agency. They're live pitching on Clubhouse to somebody on an agency, or they're going on and they're pitching to, um, you know, Damon Johns, the Shark Tank guy, the FUBU guy, they're pitching to him, they're pitching to um, Gary Vee, they're pitching to Grant Cardone, you know, some of the big names and they're, they're pitching ideas there. And literally on the fly, people are or are not investing in their stuff. I mean, it's fascinating to be able to be in the same space, even if it's virtually, doesn't matter, to be able to be in the same space with these people without having to be on Shark Tank, without having to, I don't know, fly to Miami where Grant lives. Like it, it is fascinating. I would have never been in the same space as these people. I would have never learned the amount that I have learned from the people that I have come across in, in the past 34 days on this app. I don't know that it ever would have happened, but it definitely would, it would never have happened this fast if it weren't for this app. And I have made incredible, deep and meaningful relationships with people, um, some of which you know I'm friends with now some of which I'll do uh, some sort of partnership, partnership, you know, venture capital, uh, sorry, um, JV partnership, not venture capital. That's a different space. That's where I just go to learn. Um, but a JV partnership, maybe I'm on their podcast. Maybe they're on my podcast. Maybe we just do a clubhouse room together, or maybe we're just friends. It doesn't matter. I, I have come across and really formed deep, meaningful relationships with so many people from so many different places. You brought up a lot of questions for me. Okay, so we're gonna start with the questions. All okay. right. Time. <laughs> okay. I am like, okay, the number one thing, I loved Blab. Okay, let's go back to Blab. Yep. All love Blab, that's why I thought of Terry. I'm like, dude, this is the same exact thing, but it's no video, okay? We loved Blab. But when I left Blab, when Blab went down and and then we, we were away from it. After you're away from it, you, your brain goes, okay, you know, life is a little different now mm -hmm. and I have more time. 
I actually had more time after leaving Blab because Blab was sucking up so much of my time. Yes. That's how I feel about Clubhouse, to be honest. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that because um, I have hardly jumped on. I can't start. I, d I, I thought of an idea for a room the other day and I thought, you know what? I don't have a freaking hour to do a room. I just don't. I'm in the middle of a launch. I got to focus on that. I don't have time to, to, to jump into a room. I just randomly listen. But so time is a big thing and where we focus our time like is so important over the years i've realized you got to focus your time in the right spaces i get it's important and you you know develop relationships but like you said in 32 days you've developed all this stuff like that takes a lot of time correct yes correct i was nodding my head but you can't hear that on a podcast <laughs> turns out you can't actually yeah it's yeah, weird I'm how like, that works. i'm nodding Oh, right. It's audio only. Right. So, um, yeah, it, yeah, it can take a lot of time, but I went on with the strategy. I made sure just like Periscope, I made sure that, cause I built my entire business on Periscope. I didn't have a business before Periscope. And I went on there doing pretty much the same thing that I'm doing on clubhouse, talking about starting growing and scaling your business talking about digital marketing, talking about social marketing, social media marketing, talking about branding, talking about Clubhouse, talking about how to maximize your time on Clubhouse to get sales on Clubhouse. Guess what? Well, I'm on Clubhouse. And at the very same time that I'm doing that, I have um, a PDF and it, uh, your audience can download it. Just go to bonnielfrank.com slash Clubhouse and you will get it. And it is 10 simple zero cost strategies. The only thing you got to do is get on the app, but you can use the exact same strategies to monetize any platform. And so it's the 10 strategies that I use every single day and have um, on Clubhouse and how I was able to monetize it in five days. And so not only does it include the strategies, it also gives you a lot of information about how to maximize your time and, and how to set up your bio better and things like that. Because people right now, I guarantee you, I should have checked before this interview, I didn't, but I guarantee you that more people are following me now on Clubhouse than were following me an hour ago. And I haven't been on Clubhouse yet today. I, this is my second interview today. So <clears throat> I haven't been on Clubhouse yet today, but I know that people are downloading that document. I know that people are following me on Clubhouse because I'm coming up in search because I strategically positioned my bio with the keywords and the keyword phrases and the emojis, emojis are also searchable on the app so that people could find me. I was so active on the app that it's supposed to take three weeks before you can possibly be granted a club. I had a club in under two and a half weeks because I was so active. So in order to get a club and you go to a clubhouse guide, Dot com, and that will give you information about Clubhouse. That comes from Clubhouse, and that will give you information about Clubhouse and how you can get a club. But basically, I tell my clients, do three rooms, the same topic, the same words, the same emojis, the same everything, at the same time for three, three weeks in a row. And hmm. do it strategically. Keep it in your wheelhouse. Talk about things that you really know about so that people do come to your club, your room, it won't be a club yet, they do come so that you are showing because the people, the team of Clubhouse, and it's only like nine people, it's a very small team. They're amazing, like superheroes. And so they can get the stats on all of that because there are tens of thousands of people applying for clubs every single day. There's a huge backlog of people, but I was able to get my club a whole lot faster and way ahead of all those other people because I had shown that I was bringing, I was compelling people to me for free, doing exactly what I'm doing now, talking about stuff I happen to know about and helping people. And so I was bringing, I had done 30 rooms by the time I had my, my club granted. And you only have to do three. So, I mean, it was very obvious that, hello, if you give Bonnie a club, guess what? She's going to continue doing rooms. So now I have the Business Fabulous for Female Entrepreneurs Club. There's about 7,000 people in there at this point. Keep in mind, I was been on the app, you know, slightly over a month and over, you know, uh, less than half of that amount of time I've had a club. 
So you can do the math there. It's very quickly growing. It's all free. It's all free. I don't even talk about my club a lot, but the name of the club is above the title of every room I lead. So it's free advertising for the club. So people join the club. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. And I've followed people because they're speaking too. Um, so, okay. So that, that now for you, your strategy is clubhouse, but like I'm a paid advertising person. Like I focus on paid completely. Like I don't for, for I changed my business to not focus on organic as much. I completely like say you got to play and so clubhouse is filled um, over a million people, Janet, with people who have businesses who would like to have bigger businesses. Sounds yes. like your target I, audience I to that. me. Yeah, I agree with that. But the but of it is still time. Mm -hmm. Time for people like me, like Terry, who has a completely different thing. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, and when you, I feel like here's my biggest thing with the time. When you get on, it's hard to stop. Mm. Like, you know, do you schedule yours for an hour? Do you just continue on if you have enough people? You know, I know you can pass the moderator on, but like the two hours, three hours, I mean, I've seen them go on and on for three, four hours. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's gotten into family time. You know what I mean? Right, so. no, I totally agree. And I am very, very strategic and guarded with my time, whether it's on Clubhouse or anywhere else. Yep. So sometimes I schedule in advance. I scheduled up to two weeks in advance when I was, you know, going after my club. Now I don't because I have people who keep coming back. I, I could be talking about pretty much anything and they would show up, which is incredible. But it's also because I don't talk about just anything. I keep talking about the very same things and I compel my exact audience to me for free every single time because they know they're going to get value. They also know if they raise their hand, so there's a little like hand icon and you click on that. And then whoever is on stage as a moderator can kind of beam you up to the stage, which means that your mic will be on and you can you can talk and people can hear you. So that's how you quote unquote go I on stage. that happened to me the, the one time and I couldn't leave. <laughs> like now I'm, leave. I'm driving somewhere and I'm stuck. What am I going to do? And I just sit in the parking lot for like a half an hour going, how do I leave? You can <laughs> leave. You click the button at the bottom that has the peace sign. And so I was one of the moderators. So I was like, oh, this is like you pressure still, here, you know, you leave. But if you're a moderator, you should probably help moderate the room. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't make just anyone a moderator. And I mostly do my rooms by myself. I mean, there's a lot of rooms that have six moderators. Those are- Oh, I've been on some with 20 some. Yeah, moderators. and so like, pretty much those are 18 or 19 people that are just sitting there waiting to get more people to follow them. And no. those are not the rooms I go in. I find those to be a waste of time. I wanna go into rooms where it's gonna be valuable for my time, where I'm gonna learn, whether it's something for my business or not. I wanna learn, I wanna grow personally and professionally both. And so I go in rooms very strategically for, for very specific reasons. Sometimes it's just to learn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's to learn and connect with people in the audience. So there's three, technically there's three stages, what we call stages. So one is the stage where people can speak. That's what you were talking about where you're a moderator. That's what I'm talking about when I'm leading a room. That's the stage where you can speak. And then anyone else who you beam up to the stage, they can speak to. Okay, so that's the first stage. But then there's a middle stage that people don't even realize is there. And you'll see when you go into, when you enter a room, virtually when you enter a room, you will be placed in one of these two stages and you won't even... It's not like, Bonnie, where do you want to sit? Or Bonnie, let me look at your ticket and this is where your seat is. That's not it. It's if somebody who is already on stage is following me, I will be in the second, I'll be on the second stage. I'll be in that middle section. And that middle section is important FaceTime. Hmm. Even though you're, you're virtually there, your mic is off, you can't say anything, you could DM through Twitter and Instagram because right now that is still the only way to communicate with people on the app. Ironically, 
is off the app that also has made people's Instagram and Twitter feeds surge. My stats are through the roof. I really honestly just used to use um, Instagram before because stories are fun. That's why I used Instagram before. But my following is up by about 600 people in just that amount of time, in slightly over a month. That's crazy. And it's organic. And, these, and they really are my tribe, right? It really is my target audience. So, um, so when I'm in that middle section, people are noticing that I'm there because now people understand what that middle section is. So now people are looking at the middle section going, huh, I'm gonna check out these people in the middle section while I'm sitting here and listening because you can do all of it at the same time. It literally is made for multitasking. And you can listen at the same time and reach out to someone through their DMs. You can listen at the same time, check out their bio. You can listen at the same time and go wash dishes. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but you can still hear all of it at the same time. So a lot of people are checking out people in the crowd while the talk is going on. My count goes up during that time too. People reach out to me and I reach out to other people while I'm in somebody else's room. A lot of times I will reach out to somebody and I'll say, you know, hey, you know, Jerry, I just heard you on stage. I really resonated with your message. I really appreciate you saying blah, blah, blah. That's it. I'm compelled to reach out to them. I reach out to them. Now I've opened the door for a possible conversation. I'm not thinking sales. I've met incredible people that are never going to buy from me and I don't even care. They're just unbelievable. And the things that people are talking about, they talk about anything and everything under the sun. It is fascinating. It very much that way has the blab, the blab vibe. It really has that feel to it. And also it has the feel to it where you can go in and out of any room that you want at yep. any time. Yeah, you can jump around. Terry, what kind of questions have come up for you? Well, so a couple of things, right? I'm wondering about, you went asked about time. She said she's very diligent about how she manages her time. I'm curious about what that looks like. I'm wondering, um, you know, how often do you spend leading a room versus being in a room and what the distinction is there? And, and you know, really, you mentioned earlier about the monetizing and finding some clients. It's my understanding that you... Uh, and maybe I misunderstood, but I thought I heard that you can make money inside the clubhouse, not just having people hire you. So I understood that there might be an entirely. And oh, there you are. You froze, Terry. You froze for just a second. Well, yes. let's let Bonnie answer while you're frozen. Bonnie, answer your question. Why? So the monetization is not yet built into the Terry froze. <laughs> He's froze. Yeah. You're kind of coming in and out. I don't know. The monetization is not yet built into the Clubhouse app. It will be. The developers have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have town halls twice a week, Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings. And, um, and they talk about the latest features, the latest developments, whatever it is, the latest news. And anyone can tune in. And anyone who's new to the app, so they're and they're shown by having a little party hat on their avatar. If you are on the app for less than a week, you have that little party hat. So everybody knows if you're new. And it doesn't mean that you are any certain type of person, simply that you could be the president or ex-president or former president or no president at all. And if you're on the app for less than a week, you will have that little party hat in the lower left-hand corner of your avatar picture. And so the people who- That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and so, so the people- Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it just automatically falls off at seven days. When you're okay. on a week, it just falls off. And okay. it's like you shed your skin, right? And, okay. and when it falls off, you're actually, at that time, you're given three invites to go give somebody else to get on the app, somebody wonderful like you to get on the app. And when you lead your first room, you're given a clubhouse invite. And so within about eight days of me being on the app, I was given about, I don't know, 12 or 15 different invites to get other people on the app because of how active I was being. So to answer some of Terry's questions, 
So um, each of my hours are, I'm sorry, each of my rooms, and I do two rooms a day, seven days a week, but I fit it into the rest of my work schedule. And, and um, you know, for the first, I don't know, three or five days, I was basically just stopping everything and just figuring out Clubhouse and being very strategic about it. But literally, I started building my list on Clubhouse on day two. I did a room on day one. Within 15 minutes of being on Clubhouse, I, I did a room. Now, only, a fr only one friend of mine came because I didn't even put a title. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm just like, start a room. Let's just try. Well, then I decided to be a whole lot more strategic starting on day two. And that's when I started building my list. And I built it by lots of hundreds. So, um, so each of the rooms that I lead, I've only had in all of the rooms that I've done, and oh my God, I've probably done, well, over 60 rooms for sure by this point. Um, and of, uh, when I do rooms, I've only had a moderator three times. So I mostly just do the room. I start the room. I am the only moderator. There's no co-host. There's no, but it's just me. And people come and they listen and they learn and they follow me and they may or may not hire me, but I'll get them all on my list. And, and then we go from there. So my rooms are at least an hour. There okay. have been maybe two or three times where it's gone more than that, but it was such a wonderful conversation and I didn't have anything scheduled and I was basically done with work for the day and I was having fun. So, you know, I mean, and I'm an extrovert. So I'm, I, this stuff, I live for this kind of stuff. It, it drives me almost better than caffeine. Caffeine's still number one in my life, but this is a pretty, pretty close second. So I, so I did go longer than an hour because it was fun and I was helping people and, and things like that. So it was great. But when you mostly, say conversation, an hour. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. When you say conversation, are you in discussion with other people or is it is a monologue or is it a, an actual conversation? That is a great question. So there are some people who think that Clubhouse is a webinar. And I hate that because it is not. That's not what Clubhouse is about. You can't have a conversation with one person talking. It's not a webinar. And people will do that. They'll be like, this is my stage and this is my webinar. And they, and they don't even take questions from the audience. And I, I have no understanding of that. I always introduce myself. I always stay on topic. I, people, people get exactly what they came for. I am very strategic about the words, the keywords, the keyword phrases and the emojis in my title so that it attracts my exact target audience and continues to. And, um, and at the same time, I always answer questions. I always let people up on stage and it is a conversation. And I let people know, this is not the Bonnie show. If I wanted to do a webinar, I'd have you sign up for a webinar and we would all be using the word webinar, but that's not what Clubhouse is. Now people do use Clubhouse like that. I, I don't understand yeah, why. Record, though, and or do they have any, like I was thinking, some people have said, Clubhouse could be the death of podcasts. It's not. It won't be. I don't think it is the same thing, but like Blab, Terry and I used to record our podcast on Blab. Yes. You could potentially yes. record a podcast type thing on, but they will, the, it's against their rules right now to do any recording of any sort. Do you think yeah. that will be in the future that they will have that option or do you think they'll keep it? I don't away? know. I don't know if it will or, or, or won't. You know, I mean, I have a podcast too. I have Business Fabulous. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be really fun. It's very compelling to think about, oh, I could, I could do, I could podcast from my club or from my clubhouse room, right? That would be cool. That'd be yeah, neat. It would, it would, but. But yeah, right now it's not going to happen. And, and that's also, it's part of a privacy issue because think about if we're in the same room with somebody and let's say that the three of us are doing a panel discussion on something, how to grow a business, for example. And so we're doing a panel discussion and then we're, we're taking questions from the audience. Well, if people in the audience don't realize that it's being recorded, even if you say it's being recorded, I've got, I've got lawyers and a judge in my family. So I am very careful about this kind of stuff. And we were just literally, I had a room last night and I had two lawyers in there and we were talking about this exact issue. 
even if they say, yes, it's perfectly fine. You can go ahead and do it if you let everyone in the room know that you're recording it. And they're not saying that. But even if they did, oh no. If somebody's in there and they have whatever issue they have in their life where they have to maintain privacy and they just didn't realize, now we've got a big fat issue on our hands. So I'm not gonna mess with any of that until it's very obvious to everyone on the planet that anyone can you know, record inside a, po- uh, inside a clubhouse, I'm not about to. There, I, I, nobody needs to. It's a great added feature if they would have it, but nobody needs to. And you can also build on the FOMO. So there are people who are literally selling, who are taking notes, not, not transcripts, so they're not recording, but they're taking notes in other people's rooms and then they're selling their notes. There are people who are doing that. I'm not doing that. (laughs) Yes, there are people who are doing that. Now, you know, long live the entrepreneur. More power to him, man, that's all right. (laughs) I'm not doing that. I don't take notes in, you know, in in a lot of rooms where where they're coherent enough to, for anyone to want to read them, let alone buy them. But what I am going to do is I am going to take some of the topics that I've done on Clubhouse and some of the questions that have come up in those rooms, and I am going to make a video series, and that will be part of a challenge that I do for a launch that I have coming up. So there I'm taking some of the FOMO, which is inherently built into the app, We've got iOS only right away. Most of the world has Android, always has, always will, I think. So right away, you're discounting most of the world. iOS only, invite only, and it's got to be iOS 13.0 or later. So we're talking about a very small amount of people who can possibly get on the app, let alone are on the app. Obviously, the marketers are using it because most of the market, I mean, lots of marketers are on there. Well, lots of marketers are on there, but- you know what, Janet? I see a lot of marketers failing fast. Well, that was one of my questions for you is marketers ruin everything. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> and, and, I and we're already, marketers, right? And we're, I, I know we are. I know. And they actually, I truly believe marketers ruin black. I mean, that is why they couldn't hold it. They couldn't hold, it wasn't what they expected it to be when marketers came on board and it just went crazy and then boom, it was gone. They couldn't handle, you know, they couldn't support it. And I'm seeing that a little bit with this. Um, And it's funny because Dennis Yu, I follow, I'm friends with him on Facebook. You guys know who he is. He's a Facebook ad guy too. Well, he's all ads basically, but he was, he loves Clubhouse, loves Clubhouse, but he was talking about his rooms. And he goes, millionaires teaching millionaires, um, like right now, how I made my first million. I'm just going to go through what I'm seeing. You know, uh, oh, this is better today. Mostly it's million, million, how I made my first million, make million, you know. And it's like, okay, what are marketers, are market, marketers already ruining it is the question. And will, you know, could, is that possibility? Um, how are they going to stop that? I don't know. It's interesting, but I've noticed that I'm trying to, I obviously we are going, you and me and Terry know similar people. We're going to follow these marketers, you know, like I follow Amy Porterfield. I follow Billie Jean as marketing, Grant Cardone, Gary V. you know, those big names you're going to follow. So I just am curious on those how. Are, those what, are not the people that you just named are not the people who are going to have a room title like that. Yeah, most of them, Billie Jean is marketing does. Yeah, Yeah, but it's also part of shtick. I mean, you know, it's also part of shtick and everybody knows that. And when Grant talks about that, it's all part of the shtick and everybody plays the game and you know, whatever, but you still get real value from being there. Honestly, I've been in some of those groups and, and they do, you know, like I'll jump in, just listen a little bit and it's not, bad value. It's just crazy how that's what I'm seeing across the board. It's just, well, but so, and so I'll challenge you on this. What you see is what you have taught the AI you want to see. Got it. Yep. That's what I started with. You're right. So you are 100%, just like everybody's in charge of their own social media feed. 
It's not up to Mark Zuckerberg what comes in your Facebook feed. It's up to you. If you don't yep. want to see something, hide it, delete it, block them. Let the people know you don't want to see that ad. Let the people know you, you're not going to follow that person anymore, whatever it is. You're, you're in charge of your social media feed and you're in charge of your clubhouse experience. So now, Terry, there's a lesson for you when you jump on. Be careful who you follow. <laughs> right. I don't, I'm not much of a follower. Shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> well, you'll follow some people. You'll know, you'll be like, I know this person. I know this you'll person. You'll follow us. You'll follow Janet. You'll follow me. And we'll show you the way, Terry. We will oh, okay. show you the way. So, but yeah, so who you follow helps to train the AI in terms of what they want, what the AI needs to serve you to see in your quote unquote hallway. So, so the, um, the default for the app is rooms for you, but those are rooms for you because you told the AI, Hey, these, this is what I want to see. These are all the I wish there was a little unfollow button like the three dots on Facebook, you know, so we could unfollow those, you know, like some, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't care about these. Like, you know, you know what I mean? So well, if you, and, and you can still have that at some point. Right. But. And you can go through your list. And I did that early on where I went through and I called my list with the people I was following because I wanted to curate it better. And I'll continue to do that. Um, so that you do have the experience, the exact experience that you want. But at the same time, if you see in your hallway, you know, what is something that you're not interested in, the easiest way to not be seeing that is to never go in that room and to keep going in the rooms that are filled with people who you are interested in. And you can always, so the default is rooms for you. But then there's another thing, which is my events. Those are the rooms that you're starting or that you're co-hosting. So that's how you can get to those quicker. And then there's a third option at the top, which is all rooms. Mm -hmm. So if you see like in your hallway, you're like, this is not what Bonnie was talking about at all. This is not what I'm saying. Then that's okay. Then you're, you haven't trained the, the algorithm yet. That's okay, because it takes a little bit of time. So just click on all rooms, go up to the schedule and click on all rooms. And then you'll see literally everything that's available for everybody at that time. And then go what ahead and go in those rooms. What information is included? Is it, there's a title or a topic and then how many people are in there or what, what's all um, there? There's, there's a, a title and, um, and you'll see whoever is leading the room and if there's co-hosts, who the co-hosts are. And then when you click on that, you will also see a selection of, you know, the top 10 people who are there or whatever. Um, and you'll see a little um, speech bubble next to the people who are on stage. So you'll uh, see a collection of people who you follow. If you don't know any of those people, you won't see those people, but, but you will definitely see who is leading the room, who started the room and the co-host, you'll definitely see them. And then anyone else who you follow, who's on stage and they'll have a little speech bubble by them. And so you might be like, oh, wait, Terry's that's, on stage. I'm gonna go in this the room. main reason I get into rooms is I see who's in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, you know. So that's why when I see Lewis Howes in a room, I'm like, oh, that must be kind of cool. You know, let's go join that room. So that's my, I'll do that even over the title. Mm -hmm. you know, right. And that's, and that's one way to choose. I mm -hmm. don't, that's the exact opposite of the way I choose. I don't choose that way because yep. I've heard those people. Yep. I can hear them anywhere. What I want to do is I want to go in rooms of people who are talking about a topic I'm interested in and I don't care who they are because I want to meet new people. And I want to meet and have different types of experiences and have different types of conversations than I've been having on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else. Clubhouse well, I'm grouping at this point. Special. I'm not looking to have conversations. <laughs> I've learned I'm extremely extroverted, but I'm actually introverted. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be, I'd rather not go have conversations if I don't have to. Like it's right. weird. No, I, I know that about you. Yeah. But right. it's just, you know, that's why, you know. So it's it's interesting. So I'm at snooping point at this point. But so Terry, what's your thought on all of this? Let's get a a perspective from somebody that has never been in it and on it. Like for listen. those of you listening to the podcast, Terry has been, you know, playing with the whiskers. He's been thinking. <laughs> 
the gears are turning as we speak. I, you know, ultimately, I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm torn between this could be the greatest thing that saves humanity and the biggest time suck that's ever happened, right? You know, I, I remember 2008 hopping on Twitter for the first time and being so enthralled with all the different things that people were doing. And I was pretty sure within the first two weeks of being there, that I was going to be running around and peeping in all my neighbor's windows because like the voyeuristic tendency was so strong. I feel like that's been beaten out of me a little bit. Um, if it's a great place to go pick up knowledge and connect with people, I think that's an interesting value problem. Mm -hmm. Really good. Uh, does that mean I am going to sacrifice all my great galaxy Samsung galaxy time and effort uh, and go pick up an iPhone? I don't don't know i don't know that i'm i don't know that i'm sold on it and i i had asked a question but obviously i froze i was pretty sure you both froze and then i realized well if two of the three of us are frozen it's me um <laughs> i uh i i had talked about the idea that i know you can excuse me i heard that you can monetize clubhouse but i didn't understand if that was like you could sell your services as a result or can you actually build like a paywall into a room or into a club inside of the app? And yeah, so what... that is coming. That mm -hmm. is coming. It is not yet here, but the founders have said absolutely guaranteed monetization is coming because it's something that people want, even if they're not, you know, typical marketing people. It's something that people have asked for. And people do sometimes have their cash app in their bio, but the only two things that are a live link right now on Clubhouse are your Twitter icon and your Instagram icon. Those are the only two things that are live links. You can put anything else in your bio that you want, but it's not clickable, won't be a live link and you cannot copy and paste. So, um, so monetization is coming. And the two things that they have discussed, so there's nothing, it's not here yet. I didn't wait anyway, no one needs to wait. But, but the two things that they've said are coming are number one, tipping, which would be analogous to like a, um, uh, a Patreon or a cash app, something like that, or PayPal me, you know, something like that. So tipping, where if you're in a room and somebody is giving value, you want to tip them, you can do that. And then the second option that they talked about, but who knows that they talked about was inside of a club you could monetize an event in the club. So inside of the Business Fabulous for Female Entrepreneurs Club, right now, all of my club events, so all of the rooms that I lead inside the club are actually open to everybody right now. And, but at some point, quite soon, I will be having closed club events or closed club types of situations where the only people who are going to get that information, the only people who can glean that knowledge, who can get that value are the people who are in my club. And they are saying that in the future, there is a possibility for those types of situations to be like a paid situation. And so then people are like, well, wait a minute, if you're giving all this information away for free, why would I pay to hear something like that in a club? Well, think of it, so you may or may not, but think of it this way. Let's say that there's a panel discussion. And the only way you're going to hear about this particular topic from these particular names, and maybe you've got some big names, or doesn't have to be big names, but the only people, the only way you're going to get this information is by being in this club, and you're going to have to pay five bucks or 50 bucks or $500, who knows, to be able to get it. So those are the two things that they've talked about so far, but they're not built into the app yet. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this is, I think you've laid out a fairly compelling argument, right? <laughs> Going back to the, the judge and lawyers in the family. Um, it sounds, it sounds interesting. It really does. And I, you know, I, maybe I'll, st I'll steal my kid's phone. And, well, you don't need a play phone. You can have an iPad. You can get an iPad as long as, and use an iPad as long as it's 13.0 or later. That's the key. It's got to be 13.0 or later. I have an iPad, which is too old. Um, um, so I'm, you know, if I want to use an iPad for Clubhouse, I have to get a new iPad. But um, so, so it just has to be iOS 13.0 or later. But you know what? Honestly, 
I mean, I just did a Facebook live the other day saying you don't need clubhouse because people are like, Oh, you got to get on clubhouse. You need to be, no, you don't, you don't need to be anything. You don't need to be anywhere that your audience is not. That is a waste of time. That's not what I do. So there's our tip for the day. But it doesn't help Terry's FOMO. Uh, <laughs> no, you know I, what? Okay. I'm kind I understand of, that. I had that last week. I'm kind of that was the last week issue. That's a I don't know if I'm gonna carry that with me. So Bonnie, for those of us who are interested and enjoyed what she had to say, you can go back and check out episodes 30 and 101 her two other appearances if you're looking to connect with us you can join us at businessgrowthtime.xyz and if you're looking for all the past episodes we've got businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast go check it out um i just wrapped this up i didn't even tell you we were wrapping up but we wrapped oh, the perfect, hell perfect. Up. let's wrap up with um let's Bonnie giving her resource for Clubhouse once again, or your resource for any, you know, to reach out. Where to find you. Yep. So you can find me at bonnielfrank.com, B-O-N-N-I-E-L-F-R-A-N-K.com. And if you want to learn more about Clubhouse, go to bonnielfrank.com slash Clubhouse, and you will see the exact 10 strategies I used to monetize the app in five days. And there will be loads and loads of information about Clubhouse in general and how to maximize your time on it. So you don't have to spend hours a day there. Awesome. Well, that helps. (laughs) Have a good one. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Appreciate your time. Thank you. It was fun.